In the two-dimensional world of video dots and dashes, flat blips and formless blobs, one video arcade game soars a dimension above the rest. Saxon! Experience the control as you climb and dive. Feel the power as you attack and evade. Discover a new level of excitement with the true feel of action in three dimensions. Saxon, from the master design engineers of Sega. So I start with, uh, and I do it in like 2D views like that. Does the Illustrator actually give you dimensions and all that? Yeah, it's, it's, oh, okay. it's, it's totally, uh, completely accurate dimension-wise here. Uh, so like these are my reference right. references over here. And then these are... Now my, you recreated that, that profile first, the front elevation on the left. Like you, I just did that based on my right. just carrying points through yeah. over here and setting my widths to what I want them to be. Yeah. So that gives me, with between this view and this view, I can calculate what any piece is gonna be. The good part is that I can uh, just do my artwork right on top of it, and then I, it's like all just ready to go. You know, front oh, like wow. the thing. And this is the one that I, I redrew all this. So you recreated this <laughs> from, the, from, from square one? Yeah, wow. totally from scratch. It took like Jeez. forever, so like all that's oh my God. actual. And, and how did you, did you have like a scan copy you put on the background to trace over? Yeah, or? I had a, a friend online, a Facebook friend who had his axe on and he took some, um, some good pictures of just, I just needed this part. Mm -hmm. And so he took some good pictures of that and then I worked off of that. Um, but yeah, that was like. It's hard because like you got it. you know, people, when people look at them, they don't think about all the detail that goes into it. Yeah. But it was just a fun, like, uh, like exercise, just thinking about the people who originally designed it and how they, you know, drew it and stuff. So, so that one needs like a, a custom frame there, so that part can stick out. It's not too severe. I could probably just like cut one. So Essentially, the PCB is going to go right here, up to about like here-ish, something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, on the outside, you'll see the PCB up to here, you can kind of look down and oh, see cool. the rest of it. But essentially what's going to happen is this part right here goes in this groove that's down here. Essentially, that goes in there. Yeah. There's a little piece on the other side, so it won't go all the way in. Yeah. But essentially, that part will stick in there, and then this will attach up at the top. I need the frame, yeah. which I'm going to make. Um, I need a tube, and you need the chassis, uh, and the yoke that goes on the back there. But essentially, I find a tube with the right yoke that I want. Uh, part I'm really concerned about, I know the monitor is going to fit, the joystick, um, how deep down it goes and how high it goes for visibility is an issue. And then the only other, you know, the real problem is the board and it should, it should like worst case scenario should just like, I should mm -hmm. have all this free space because the monitor doesn't come all the way. So you can get an idea of like what it's going to look oh, like. Yeah. So you'll see like about that much of the board. I might have to move it down a little bit. I might also do it the other way. Oh, and these are, so on the inside here you got like the service button and like for extra credits. Because the, the, the actual fight stick would be like... Yeah, here I'll show you. <laughs> this is the actual one I got. Oh yeah. And I was hoping it would just work because it would be great because I could just pull everything off yeah. and just use it exactly. Um, but you see like 
hey, like, this thing is a monster. Because yeah. it has just, like, all this extra stuff in here just to give it, like, a good feel. Oh, you right. know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Okay, so it's, like, much more heavy because it's, like, this is much more heavy. Yeah, there's a monster, more yeah. monster on that thing. <laughs> but it's cool. It's really awesome. Yeah. And uh, I think I could probably get that to fit under here. It'd be super, super close. The lowest this could be would be, say, like, here. You know, what I mean? <laughs> right, yeah. so I think that's like yeah, a little crazy. Yeah. We still have the the fire buttons would be here either way, mm -hmm. and then we do like the the, the regular something like this. Yeah. These are the ones you can on the Frogger, but something like this. Yeah, and it's just a nice uh, a nice little one like that. But combined with, so you got the nice outlet, but it has a fuse and a line filter. Yeah. And then, so that go, comes in. And that will power both this and uh, the CRT. Yep. So that this goes into here, and then we get all our DC voltages for the board. 100% decided on this. But I think I'm going to do what I was saying, which is vinyl, clear film cut on the back of this piece. Jerry, video games are the latest craze to sweep the country and most of the world, too. Millions of people are addicted to hours of gazing at electronic images on game screens and arcades and in their own homes. What makes video games so popular? Well, we search for an answer as we begin a special series on video fever, games people play. In 1981, Americans popped in between five and nine billion dollars worth of quarters and tokens into the slots of arcade video games. Part of the fascination is the way the games are designed. Take 13-year-old Paul Glatzer playing Zaxxon. The game is three-dimensional. The screen is full of tricks to avoid. Your airplane moves faster than the speed of sound. Your tongue hungers for a kill. I like the details on it. There's good details on the games. Pretty much 100% mm -hmm. complete, you would say? Yeah, 99%. Wow. A little less, little touches. Oh, and then I'll have so, Zaxxon uses an 8 way joystick, is that correct? Yeah. yeah it's, uh, it's, like so, it's so miniaturized. So, and then I was really happy with how this cut. So, there's a latch there. Onto there. Wow. But yeah, so those are these switch buttons for everything. And then just a normal standard airway joystick. There. And then this piece comes out, so it's like the front. Like the piece. So when it has axon, there's no there's nothing on the bezel. Yeah, it's, it's just, just black. It's just black. Okay. Yeah. Which is uh worked out good. And then this and then I made this. So that's a little uh, bezel there. Oh wow. So it fits around. That's there. cool. Yeah. And then the control panel smushes everything That's down into place. Yeah. And then um yeah, so then here's the like the monitor controls to like adjust the size and brightness. And so like on this one you, you can do the vertical position, uh, the horizontal position, but mostly it's for that you can do the vertical size, but you can't do the horizontal size. Okay. Which is kind of how it is. Uh, but like black level, which is uh, brightness. Yeah. And then contrast. And then the vertical hold. How'd yeah. you, so how'd you cut the. Uh, what, what is it like? Uh, just the. It's a, it's a transparent vinyl. Yeah. But it's like hard to get vinyl that's like actually see through. Yeah. But you can get it where like light can shine through. But like I want it to actually be like you can you know, see what's exactly what's behind it, you know? Right. Like, so for actually what I did first was I had a, like, a sheet of the red. Yeah. And I cut that, like, all these lines on it. Mm -hmm. And then I, like, uh, took out the insides of the letters, cut the same thing with the blue. And I took those letters and placed them inside of the red ones. The well, was the red ones were still stuck on the sheet. Right. And then uh, same thing with these black ones. And then I'd, like, put transfer paper on that. Mm -hmm. And then pulled that up, so then I had all of this on a piece, and then that I put that onto the back. Mm -hmm. And how'd you print this out? Uh, I just had that printed. So that's a you. That's from a vector 
Yes, yeah, so this uh, is all the stuff I yeah, originally you were on this. Yeah. So uh, the light is this uh like it's LED but it's like a neon looking strip on the inside there. Oh I see, yeah. Yeah, it does look like it, it did look, look like a neon light yeah. from the photos. So, the board goes parts facing the window. Sure. And then uh, the volume is right here. So, like when it goes in, you can reach that from the front door. From the front, okay. But uh, so that's the way it goes in, like that. Slots. watching this one video about this guy in Pennsylvania who was restoring it at Zaxxon. Yeah. And he says like when you turn it on, that there's no sound. sound on the first game. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Okay. He says it's like Good. that on all of these old time marketing. I was thinking it was just something quirky about it. Because yeah. it always comes back. Yeah, I did I did remember him saying that. He's like he didn't understand why, but it's always the first <laughs> game has no sound when you turn it on. And I guess the same thing the same thing if you hit the reset, it does yeah. the same thing, yeah. 